the fourth series, second group, mixing energy from the left body and the right body. The second group consists of 14 magical passes that mix the energy of both bodies at their respective centers of vitality. The shamans of ancient Mexico believed that mixing energy in this fashion makes it possible to separate the energy of both bodies more readily by dropping unfamiliar energy into them, a process which they described as exacerbating the centers of vitality. 17. Bunching Necessary Energy and Dispersing Unnecessary Energy This magical pass entails movements that could best be described as pushing something solid across the front of the body with the palm of the hand, and dragging it back across the front of the body with the back of the hand. It starts with the left arm kept close to the body, by the waist, with the forearm bent at a 90 degree angle. The forearm is brought closer to the body as the movement begins, and the hand is bent back at the wrist. The palm of the left hand faces right, the thumb is locked. Then, as if a great force were opposing it, it moves across the body to the extreme right, without the elbow losing its 90 degree angle, figure 239. From there, again as if a great force were opposing it, the hand is dragged as far left as it can reach without losing the 90 degree angle of the elbow, with the palm still facing the right, figure 240. During this entire sequence of movements, the muscles of the left body are contracted to the maximum, and the right arm is held immobile against the right leg. The same sequence of movements is repeated with the right arm and hand. 18. Piling energy onto the left and right bodies. The weight is placed on the right leg. The knee is slightly bent for support and balance. The left leg and arm, which are kept semdens, sweep in front of the body in an arc from left to right, in unison. The left foot and the left hand end at a position just to the right of the body. The outer edge of the left foot touches the ground. The fingertips of the left hand point down as the sweep is made, figure 241. Then both the left leg and the left arm return to their original positions. The exact sequence is repeated by sweeping the right leg and arm to the left. 19. Gathering energy with one arm and striking it with the other. Don Juan said that with this magical pass, energy was stirred and collected with the movement of one arm and was struck with the movement of the opposite arm. He believed that striking, with one hand, energy which had been gathered by the other, allowed the entrance of energy into one body from sources belonging to the other body, something which was never done under normal conditions. The left arm moves up to the level of the eyes. The wrist is slightly bent backwards, in this position, going from left to right and back again, the hand draws the figure of an oval, about a foot and a half wide and as long as the width of the body, figure 242. Then the hand, with the palm facing down, moves across at eye level from left to right as if cutting through, with the tips of the fingers, the figure which it has drawn, figure 243. At the moment that the left hand reaches the level of the right shoulder, the right hand, which is held at waist level with the cupped palm turned upward, shoots forward, striking with the heel of the hand, to hit the spot in the middle of the oval drawn by the left hand, as the left hand is slowly brought down, Figure 244. As it strikes, the palm of the right hand is facing forward, and the fingers are slightly curved, permitting in this fashion the necessary contour of the palm to strike a round surface. The strike ends with the elbow slightly bent, to avoid overstretching the tendons. The same movements are performed beginning with the right arm. 20. Gathering energy with the arms and legs. The body pivots slightly to the right on the ball of the right foot, the left leg juts out at a 45 degree angle, with the knee bent to give a forward slant to the trunk. The body is made to rock three times, as if to gain momentum. Then the left arm scoops downward as if to grab something at the level of the left knee, figure 245. The body leans back, and with that impulse, the lower part of the left leg, from the knee down, is brought close to the groin, almost touching it with the heel, the left hand swiftly brushes the vital area of the liver and gallbladder, on the right, figure 246. 
The same sequence of movements is repeated with the right leg and arm, which bring the gathered energy to the center of vitality located around the pancreas and spleen, on the left. 21. Moving energy from the left and the right shoulders. The left arm moves from its natural position hanging by the left thigh to the right shoulder, where it grabs something, and the hand turns into a fist. This movement is propelled by a sharp twist of the waist to the right. The knees are slightly bent to allow this turning movement. The acutely bent elbow is not allowed to sag, but is kept at the level of the shoulders, figure 247. Propelled by a straightening of the waist, the fist is then moved away from the right shoulder in an upward arc, striking, with the back of the hand, a point slightly above the head and in line with the left shoulder, figure 248. The hand opens there as if to drop something that is held in the fist. The same sequence of movements is repeated with the right arm. 22. Gathering energy from one body and dispersing it on the other. Beginning from its natural position by the left thigh, the left arm draws an arc from left to right, crossing in front of the pubis until it reaches the extreme right. This movement is aided by a slight turn of the waist. From there, the arm continues moving in a circle above the head, to the height and level of the left shoulder. It cuts across then to the level of the right shoulder. There, the hand turns into a fist, as if grabbing something, with the palm down, figure 249. Next, the fist hits a point at the height of the head, an arm's length away from it. The blow is delivered with the soft edge of the hand, using the hand as if it were a hammer. The arm is fully extended, but slightly curved at the elbow, figure 250. The same movements are repeated with the right arm. 23. Hammering energy from the left shoulder and the right shoulder on the midpoint in front of the face. The left arm is moved above the head. The elbow is bent at a 90 degree angle. The hand turns there into a fist, with the palm facing upward. Then it strikes from the left. With the soft edge of the hand, the division line of the left and right body, in front of the face. The body leans slightly to the left as this strike is made, figure 251. The fisted hand keeps on moving until it almost touches the right shoulder, the palm turns there so that it faces downward. Then it makes a similar strike, this time from the right, the body leans to the right, figure 252. This same sequence of movements is repeated with the right arm. A reservoir of neutral energy can be built by this magical pass, meaning energy which can easily be used by either the left body or the right body. 24. A strike with the hand fisted at the second knuckle. Both arms are lifted to the level of the neck, the elbows held at 90 degree angles. The hands are held with the fingers bent at the second knuckle and held tightly over the palm. Figures 253, 254. From this position, Din left hand strikes. The strike is a powerful swing made to the right, point one one toss the line of the right shoulder, but without greatly moving the arm. One in arm is driven by a powerful rightward twist of the waist, figure 255. The right arm moves in the same fashion beyond the line of the left shoulder driven by an instantaneous leftward twist of the waist. 25. Grabbing energy from the shoulders and smashing it on the centers of vitality. The left arm moves to the right shoulder, and the hand turns into a fist, as if grabbing something, figure 256. The elbow is kept bent at a 90 degree angle. Then the fist is forcefully brought back to the left side by the waist, figure 257. It stays there for an instant to gain impulse, and then the fist shoots across the body to the right, the fisted palm facing the body, to strike through a point by the area of the liver and gallbladder, figure 258. The same movement is repeated with the right arm, which strikes across the area of the pancreas and spleen. 26. Pushing energy to the sides with the elbows. Both arms are brought to the level of the shoulders the elbows bent sharply and protruding straight out. The wrists are crossed making a letter X, the left forearm on top of the right one. The hands, 
clenched into fists, touch the pectoral muscles at the edges of the axilla, the left fist touches the edges of the right axilla and the right fist the edges of the left axilla, figure 259. The elbows are then forcefully brought out to the sides in line with the shoulders, as if to give an elbow blow to the sides, figure 260. This movement is repeated with the right arm on top of the left. 27. Drawing two inward circles of energy in front of the body and crushing them out to the sides. As a deep breath is taken, the arms circle in unison from their natural position at the sides of the thighs, to the line that separates the left and the right bodies. This movement ends with the forearms crossed over the chest. The fingers are kept tightly together, pointing upward, the thumbs locked, the wrists are bent at 90 degree angles. The left arm is on top of the right one. The locked thumb of the left hand touches the pectoral muscle of the right body, and the locked thumb of the right hand touches the pectoral muscle of the left body, figure 261. The inhalation ends there. A quick exhalation is made as the arms are spread apart forcefully with the hands clenched into fists, each striking, with the back of the hand, a point on the respective sides above the head, figure 262. The same movements are repeated with the right arm on top of the left. 28. Striking energy in front of the body and on the left and right with both fists. The hands are clenched into fists at the level of the waist. The palms of the fists face each other. Both hands are lifted to the level of the eyes and strike forcefully downward in unison at two points in front of the groin, they hit the target with the soft part of the fists, figure 263. From there, the arms swing in unison, making an upward arc to the left as the whole trunk leans toward the left, following the impulse of the arms. The fists strike with the knuckles, figure 264. The fists return to deliver another blow to the same points in front of the groin. From there, the arms swing in unison, making an upward arc to the right as the whole trunk leans toward the right, following the impulse of the arms. The fists strike with the knuckles. The fists move one more time to deliver a blow with the soft edge of the hands to the same two points in front of the groin. 29. Striking energy in front of the body with both fists and on the left and the right. The beginning of this magical pass is exactly like the preceding one, figure 265. Once the strike is completed, both arms are lifted like hammers to the level of the head, and the trunk is made to turn sharply to the left. The two fists strike two points in front of the left hip, figure 266. The arms lift again to the height of the head. The palms of the hands are opened, and they descend to strike the same two points, figure 267. The arms are raised again to the level of the head. The hands turn into fists to strike the same points once again. The forearms are raised to the level of the head, the body turns to face the front, and the fists are slammed down on the same points in front of the groin. The same sequence of movements is repeated with the trunk turned sharply to the right. 30. Smashing energy with the wrists above the head and on the left and the right. Both hands are raised above the head, with the wrists touching and the palms curved as if holding a ball, figure 268. Then the trunk turns to the left, as both arms move sharply to the left of the waist without disengaging the wrists, which rotate on each other to accommodate the new position of the hands. The palm of the left hand faces upward and the palm of the right hand faces downward, figure 269. Both arms are moved to the point above the head again, still without disengaging the wrists, which rotate to adopt their initial position. The same sequence of movements is performed by bringing the hands sharply to a point to the right of the waist. The movement ends by bringing the hands back to their starting position above the head, 